If you've ever had the opportunity to visit uh, St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, you can't help uh, but be amazed at the hundreds of statues that are in there. Uh, if you haven't had that opportunity, you can go online. There's a virtual tour that uh, uh, also can let you see some of those things. Now, many of those statues uh, depict saints, as you might expect, just like uh, here in our own church. But many also depict uh, the Christian virtues, patience, courage, justice, uh, fortitude, etc. And now the virtues are always depicted as women. No surprise, right? Because we know women are more uh, virtuous than men. So the men should be jealous, but it's true. So the virtue of justice, for example, is a woman holding scales, uh, meeting out justice. Uh, the virtue of faith is uh, a woman with a crucifix. The virtue of contemplation is a woman with a Bible uh, looking up to heaven. Now these virtues, they don't have like little signs on them that say what the virtues are. You have to kind of figure it out. So one of the virtues, one of the statues of the virtues is a woman with three small children. One, ch one child in her arms and two children at her feet. So what virtue do you think that is meant to depict? All right, no audience participation today. Well, you probably can guess it's the virtue of love uh, from our readings today. Almost everyone understands uh, that a woman uh, with her children is a universal uh, sign, a universal depiction of love. So on this uh, Mother's Day, let's take a few minutes uh, and reflect upon how the love of God is reflected in human relationships and especially in, in motherhood. First of all, think about the love of a mother for her children. Our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is very familiar to us, but it's really an extraordinary uh, message for its time. So we hear that Peter enters the house of Cornelius. Cornelius was a, a Roman soldier, so he's a pagan, right? He's not a Jew. He's an unbeliever. And Peter makes this statement, in truth I see that God shows no partiality. Another translation in a different Bible says, uh, no favoritism. Now that's a big deal, right? What? No favoritism? The Jewish people understood themselves not just as God's favorite, but as God's chosen, excluding uh, everyone else. I think I mentioned a few weeks ago that one way of understanding the Old Testament is it's the story of a family that became a nation. The story of Abraham and Sarah and how they became a nation. But here, today, we learn that God's family is much bigger uh, than just the Jewish people. It encompasses everyone. God doesn't show any favoritism. Think about a mother and her children. Now, I know I'm my mother's favorite, but I would assume that my brothers and my sister probably say the same thing. And I think if probably uh, many of us or all of us feel that way. So when we think about motherhood, we would think a mother is going to love her children equally and not have favorites. The Jewish believers are astonished when the Holy Spirit is poured out on these outsiders, these people who are not God's favorite. Uh, as a mother loves all her children, so God loves all persons. And so I think we have to ask ourselves, at least I ask myself, who would I be astonished to hear that God has poured out God's Holy Spirit on them. Probably people I don't agree with, people I might consider to be politically different or an enemy or something like that, but the truth of this is God loves them and pours out God's Spirit on them the same as each one of us. Then in the second reading from the first letter of St. John, we learn that God is love. Crucial line we heard from Scripture. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. Not just that God loves. I think every religion would say that God loves, but I think our faith is unique in saying that God is love. God's essence is actually love. And of course, love requires a lover and a beloved. Love requires a relationship. Now, you and I have to look outside of ourselves for this in our family, in our friends, but God 
who is perfect in every way, has this within God's very being. God's essence is love, and this reveals to us the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or another way of saying it is simply the lover, the beloved, and the love that goes between them. And since we're made in the image of God, that means there has to be something Trinitarian about us as well. Now, no, we don't exist as three persons uh, in one being, but we are made, like God, to be in relationship. I'm going to read that really important line from 1 John again, because the scripture says, Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. Now, motherhood is, of course, one powerful, beautiful example of this kind of love. Each one of us here only exists because of the love of a mother. And today is that special day when we, we thank our mothers uh, for all of their acts of love, uh, the big ones and the small ones over their years. Um, them loving us into existence, uh, carrying us and caring for us in the womb, they're feeding us with their very body and with their hands, uh, clothing us, bathing us, uh, teaching us to, to walk, to talk, uh, teaching us to read, to pray, bringing us to the faith, bringing us to baptism, bringing us, teaching us to love. And so this love that takes root in the family then extends out to the rest of the world. From the earliest days of the church, love was the mark of Christian believers. In fact, pagans would marvel at the sharing among Christians and say and comment, see how they love one another. Early Christians were described uh, to a Roman emperor named Hadrian. We have a letter to the emperor uh, in this way. They love one another. They never fail to help widows, to save orphans from those who would hurt them. If they have something, they give freely to those who have nothing. They do not consider themselves brothers or sisters in the usual sense, but instead brothers and sisters in the spirit of God. The spread of the gospel, uh, the growth of Christianity, was less about what I'm doing now, uh, preaching with my voice, and more about the living gospel uh, in the lives of the followers of Jesus. When the plagues, when the epidemics uh, were, were raging, and we know something about epidemics, don't we? Uh, the Christians would care for one another, but even more amazingly, they would care for people outside their community. They would care for uh, non-Christians, for pagans. The pagans, uh, the people who did not believe, were not caring either for their own or for anyone else. So I think on this Mother's Day, uh, it gives us a great opportunity to draw a comparison, if you will, between uh, motherhood and being a follower of Christ. Now, of course, I only know about motherhood as an observer, uh, but it strikes me that being a mother uh, is, of course, filled with blessings, but it's also uh, fraught with challenges and sacrifices. Uh, I think it's, it's clear that it's altogether possible for a woman to uh, get pregnant and give birth and nominally be a mother, but never really fulfill that role of love and self-sacrifice and nurturing that we celebrate uh, on Mother's Day. That's unusual, but it does happen. And in the same way, being a Christian is not just something that happens to us through an event through our baptism or through calling ourselves uh, a Christian, like, like motherhood, it's something that we do. It's a life in keeping with Jesus' words. On the other hand, it's altogether possible for a woman who's never carried a child, uh, given birth in the biological sense, to be a mother, either through adoption or through taking on that role of motherhood, uh, being a teacher, being a mentor, uh, nurturing and caring for uh, children or uh, even adults. Because it seems, this, again, to me, motherhood is not something that simply happens to a woman. It's something that then she chooses to live and act in a certain way. In the same way, there are probably followers of Christ who have never called themselves a Christian. 
St. Augustine put it this way. He said, Christ has many, the church has not, and the church has many, Christ has not. Powerful words. Think about that. The distinguishing characteristic of a follower of Christ, whether she or he calls himself that, is this self-giving love. And just as in those early Christian times, the love that Jesus commands us to do in the gospel today motivates us to do things that we would not do were it not for the love of God. I think it's like the love a mother, uh, the love a mother has for her child or her children that leads her to do things that she wouldn't do except for her, the love of the child. So a mother, I think, finds fulfillment not just in the blessings, not just in, in the good things, but in the, the work, the 2 a.m. feedings, the daily work, changing diapers, helping with homework, sleepless nights, praying for her children, uh, even the trials of parenting teenagers. Not because those things are enjoyable in themselves, but because of the fulfillment that comes from nurturing this child who they love. The love a Christian has for Jesus motivates us also to find fulfillment in things that might not come uh, naturally, to love our enemies, to give of ourselves, to care for the poor, to welcome the stranger, to be of service for others. I think I've quoted before the uh, African-American preacher uh, Sojourner Truth, and it's very fitting for Mother's Day. She asks the question, where did your Christ come from? from God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. And this is very true. The amazing reality of the incarnation begins with the yes of a woman, with the yes of someone who accepted the role of mother. So on Mother's Day, I think it's so important to recognize and celebrate that and to understand that really each one of us, woman or man, uh, has that opportunity now to give the same yes. Understanding the vocation of our Blessed Mother helps us to understand our own vocation, to say yes to the presence of Christ, to accept Christ into our lives, and in a few moments to accept Christ into our bodies in the Eucharist, and then not to keep it for ourselves, but to return it to the world, to follow that command that we heard in the Gospel, to love one another.